Hello and welcome to Convict Inc. I'm your host Robert Rosso putting down the fourth, is it the fourth video today in the black shirt? But I changed my hat. I put the red hat on. You know, I had like so many hats some months ago and I was trying to, what the hell happened? I got three hats now. Anyway, um, welcome to Convict Inc. I'm your host Robert Rosso. Please subscribe if you have not. Please hit the like button if you like the video. I don't know how many people in this audience are going to know who James Stacy was. Maurice Elias, James Stacy, born in 1939, died in, in 2016, married to actress Connie Stevens, uh, Kim Darby, played on Gunsmoke for a second, and uh, Lancer was the big show he was on, and this is like in the 60s, so uh, actually the analytics on the, this YouTube thing shows like the audience is basically from 30 to 50 or something like that, most of the people, so I'm not, I'm not really sure. I knew Gunsmoke and Lancer because my grandfather was a big cowboy western fan. Um, anyway... This guy was a Hollywood actor. That's his, his James Stacy. That's what he went by, Maurice Elias. Um, he had it going on back in the day. Um, handsome guy, good looking into the Hollywood scene, had all the babes. Ladies man, alcoholic. Got in a motorcycle accident, got his leg chopped off. Decided he wanted to kill himself. Jumped off a cliff in Hawaii. Lost his arm. One arm missing, one leg missing. In 1995, 94, 93, I'm not sure the year, right in there. Uh, he was sentenced for child molestation. That is, he had a maid and he was fondling the maid, the Mexican maid, uh, I think she was an illegal, her 11-year-old daughter. Uh, I think that's how the story went. Uh, he ended up in prison with the six year sentence and ended up at Chino where I happened to be housed. Now, I'm sitting in the temple and for those of you who haven't heard uh, the video or didn't watch the video, the first time I shot dope, which was in Chino, uh, Chino, since our Chino minimum yard was huge and it had all these different places for people to hang out. And you can go hang out in the in the synagogue or the that's what it was the synagogue. Damn, I can't believe uh, the the church. Um, where do the Muslims go? Uh, there's different places all over the prison. I hung out in this, what would be the synagogue. That's what it was, and that's where we shot dope. Man, I missed the synagogue last video. Ain't that a bitch? Anyway. Uh, there were 17 Jews or friend of the fellowship. Actually, there was probably three real Jews actually converted to Jews and the rest were all friends of the fellowship, which means guys hung out and watched TV without having to be in the prison environment. When you went, walked into this place and you sat down and you locked yourself in, you're just in with, actually didn't lock, the, you, you uh, left the doors open. But you, when you went in that place, you felt like you weren't in prison. Uh, you get to eat commissary that, that was in the locker, $500 a month was the budget for the for, for uh, each religious program. So we drank hot chocolate but and all that stuff, but I shot a lot of dope. I did go to the services on Saturday. One day, we're sitting there, and here comes a guy who was in what's called the old man's dorm. The old man's dorm uh, was over by the handball courts in the corner of the prison. I forgot the name of it now. Uh, guys that were sick or old were in that dorm. And he wheeled himself over. Now, if he had his right long, he was either missing his right arm and left leg or vice versa. So he was like, you know, he'd want to be, so he, he can wheel himself and push with one leg. This guy comes up. And he was just the bitterest motherfucker you've ever seen. Just a nasty looking face. His disposition was all wrong. And he had that whole handicap thing going for him, which, is, which was tragic. You felt bad when you saw this guy, right? So, well, 
he introduced himself as Maurice. Came in, looked around, people were talking. He isolated by himself, didn't have much to say. And uh, went back later that night. I'll never forget. I, I asked if he wanted me to push him back. And he said, no, no, I can do it myself. And I was like, all right, whatever. Okay, so some days go by. He comes back again. Same thing. Doesn't say much. Picks up a few books that are in there. Kind of looks at the TV, glances at it. Burns off. Doesn't want nobody to take him back. It was uh, around the following weekend. Somebody had said, hey, man, that guy was out there visiting with uh, um, Marlon Brando. And people are like, what? It's like, that dude's like a famous actor or something. And Brando was supposedly out there. That was the word of the prison. Um, as a matter of fact, prior to Brando allegedly coming, uh, there was somebody else and there was a little bit of talk that this guy might have been some Hollywood star. Well, I happened to get on the phone one day. It was my phone day. When I heard that Brando was there and my grandpa was at my dad's. Uh, my dad was living in Arkansas at the time. My mom had not yet moved back here. Uh, she was in the process of retiring, but my grandpa was back here with my dad. And it was one of those days I talked to my grandpa and I said, hey, hey, grandpa, do you know somebody named Maurice Elias? He said, Maurice Elias? I said, yeah. He said, hell, that's James Stacy, Robert. And I said, James Stacy, I don't know what, what's that mean. He was married and he talked about the girls he was married to. And he said, I think he lost his leg. And I said, the guy's got, you know, one, missing one leg and one arm. And uh, so my grandpa was kind of a fan. So I said, shit, I'm going to go get this guy's autograph for my grandpa. Sure enough, later that night, I went over there and he was there for service Saturday. And uh, I said, hey, man, hey, James. And he looked at me. And I said, look, my grandpa was a huge fan of Lancer. And he says, get the hell away from me. I don't want to talk about none of that shit. And I said, oh, rip. Like I was a little bit shocked. So after service, he apologized to me. But he said that he didn't want to do autographs. Those days were behind him. It was a long time ago and whatnot. I, okay, all right. You know, the next, on the following Monday, I'm at work. I work in medical. I'm a, I'm a medical clerk. Uh, we're around all the female staff, sweet ass job, and a girl who was actually married to Magic Johnson <laughs> knows that was a little crazy. She had pictures. Uh, her last name was Johnson, by the way, through marriage. She was real deal, no shit. Uh, black chick, cool, just, just the coolest lady. Came up to us. And she said, you guys know that guy out there? And I'm like, yeah, I know who he is. And she went, made, made a bunch of faces. Okay. So he was coming into medical and he went into medical and he got in an argument inside medical with the, with the nurses, the nurses treated him bad. And I, I didn't, I didn't get it. Nobody, nobody knew what he was in prison for at the time. Next thing you know, this Johnson drops off. A newspaper article drops on the floor by us. We pick it up, look at it, and there it is. The article, a dude, and he is a sex offender who molested an 11-year-old girl. Woof. Okay, now. So now, we've got a sex offender we know about. I go to the synagogue later that night. Because he's now he's starting to come in every day. Because it's a good place to hang out. And I show guys in there and everybody's like okay okay so a plan was hatched the following day old James Stacy rolls in it's about time to go and as he goes down the ramp I grab the back and he's like no 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 it's okay no no I got you I got you James don't worry buddy I got you I'm taking you home and I just kept pushing his wheelchair. He couldn't stop. He got one arm and one leg and uh, kept rolling him. And I rolled him and I rolled him. We went towards the front of the door. And as we went to the front of the door, stopped. Took a right and he tried to stop. 
He was pushing his foot, you know, trying to stop himself. Rolled him on back behind the wall where two bombers were waiting. <laughs> he got tipped out of his chair, tossed on the ground, and stomped, and stomped, and stomped. And he was like this. Now imagine a guy with one arm and one leg, what was he probably in his 50s or 60s at the time, whatever it was. Uh, so yeah, 50s, uh, maybe early 60s. Uh, I'm gonna say this. It was, there was something very sad about seeing this dude with one arm and one leg flailing around. Like, you know, he couldn't get up. But he was like trying, he just kept, he was getting booted to fuck. And, but he's a sex offender, you know? And uh, there was that part of me that thought, man, this, there's something bad about this. But there was another part of me that thought, somewhere there's a maid with a little girl smiling when she finds us out one day. That's, that's, and that's the truth about how I felt. Uh, and I will say this for, uh, James Stacy, who died in 2016 at a doctor's office, and I just read this on the internet, given like an antibiotic shot or something. Watch those vaccines, people. Be aware. <laughs> Watch them. Um, yeah, so you can look it up. Maurice Elias, actor James Stacy, who was married to. Uh, oh, what I was going to say is I'll say this. That guy was fucked up. He was beat to a pulp. He never said a word, never said a word, never cried. Ne ne that's one of the, he never cried out, never hollered, never told when they came and found him. T oh, they took his wheel. His wheelchair was taken and smashed. So he was, you know, had to crawl. Uh, and there it is. Not a long one. One I thought I'd put out there for you. No, I should burn the black shirt that I've been wearing all day for everybody. And uh, yeah, actor James Stacy, sex offender, Chino, 1996, actually. It was 96 by the time I got to Chino's tuition for men. All right, that's it for the day.